pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Good morning. My name is Christopher Blake. I am the president of Middle Georgia State College. Governor Deal, First Lady Sandra Deal, Major General Hadder, Chancellor Huckleby, Commissioner Jackson, President Allen, Congressman Scott, Regent Board of Regents, elected officials, men, women, and veterans of our armed services, and ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to this wonderful occasion on this lovely, cool August day. <laughs> on behalf of Middle Georgia State and our partners, I want to thank, first of all, the Color Guard for the wonderful presentation from the Veterans High School here in Warner Robins for the Pledge of Allegiance given by our Middle Georgia State student and Georgia Army National Guard, Sergeant Darius Ford, and for you and for our state leaders for their support for higher education and the welfare of our veterans and those who serve in our armed services. We're proud at Middle Georgia State to have over 500 students who are in the armed services. For me, that is a very powerful reminder of the values that underpin democracy and this fine nation of which I am proud to be a citizen. 2,000 years ago, the cities of Sparta and Athens provided the city-state for the founding of the Greek Republic. The strength of military and the strength of mind were aligned, but in two separate places. I am proud that we can bring the power of might and mind, the strength and service of our armed services and the power of education together in a truly tangible and living way here in Warner Robins. That is indeed a wonderful co-joining of strength. We're proud to announce today that uh, in this opening, uh, that at Miller, Middle Georgia State, we will be admitting students on the basis of them being able to present their military ID as proof that they are worthy of an education. And that is something that we look forward to welcoming those who will get an education with the background and the strengths and the leadership and the experience that will indeed shape the well-being of all for the future. The project that we embark on today is a $10 million building that is far more valuable than any dollar price that can be put on it. With our partners at Central Georgia Technical College, we will be looking forward to providing opportunities for training and education so that those excellent men and women of our armed services can continue to serve in the communities here in Georgia. I thank you for being here. I look forward to the work that goes ahead. And at this point, it's my pleasure to introduce the mayor of Warner Robins, Mr. Randy Thomas. For a city that is basically in existence because of our military and our deep love for the military, a, a city and a community that loves the military and loves our veterans, it is just exciting to be a part of a partnership like this that brings an unprecedented um, organization together to bring a service, a much needed service to our veterans and to again be able to be just a part of something that shows our veterans and our military how much they are appreciated and how much they are loved in this community. And so I just want to say welcome again. Thank you for all the participation. It is absolutely amazing to look out and see this great crowd. 
and I thank you all for coming out and welcome here to what is the start of a wonderful, wonderful partnership and opportunity for us again to show our love and our, our support and our respect for our veterans that have served us so greatly and have caused us to be who we are today. So thank you, and at this time I would like to introduce Dr. Ivan Allen from the Central Georgia Technical College. Good morning and welcome. I promise my comments will be brief. First, to the 82nd governor of the great state of Georgia, thank you for your vision, thank you for your leadership. This day would not be possible without your commitment to not only Georgia, but our heroes all over the world. Thank you. One moment of privilege I would like for every member of the General Assembly to please stand. Every member of Georgia's General Assembly to please stand. Let's thank them for their commitment. And now in closing, to all of you here in uniform, to every last one of you who served, and those who are serving right now in theaters around the world, our commitment is great and our promise is true. Whether you have protected us by air, by land, or by sea, we say thank you. And today, in addition to having the best state in which to do business, this is also the best state for veterans and their families to live, work, and play. God bless you. And now it is my honor to introduce my boss and a great, great man who has led the technical college system of Georgia to new heights, Commissioner Ron Jackson. Well, thank you, President Allen and uh, Governor. Uh, it's an honor. It's always a tough job to follow Alvin Allen on the program. He's got that minister thing going. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I can tell you how proud we are at the Technical College System of Georgia and our local board of directors, our, our state board members, Shaw Blackman, who is here, how proud we are to join in partnership with our good friends at the university system to serve the military families and veterans of this state. Uh, this facility will mean that it will show and demonstrate, Governor, our commitment to the veterans that are returning from active duty, who are going into the, the job market and providing them the fastest access to that job market that we can possibly give them from the higher education systems here in Georgia. We don't care whether a veteran or a member of a military's family, whether they want to be a welder, a truck driver, a PhD in engineering, a teacher with a master's degree, we want to make sure that we get you, those members of the military and your family, what you need as quickly as you can and be in that workforce when you leave your active duty. It is important to Georgia. It's important to us our friends in the university system, that this facility provides not only a one-stop shop, but shows our commitment in higher education to make sure every one of our colleges in both of our systems are meeting the needs of our veterans and our military families. Our commitment is indeed strong. We want to thank you all in the, in the service for your service to our country, and we will demonstrate to you in Georgia Whenever you need higher education services, you will be at the front of our line. General Haddad, thank you very much for being here with us today. It is a great day for Georgia. It's a great day for Central Georgia, and it's a great day for Warner Robins, and we're very proud to be here. And it's my honor to introduce um, our partner in this facility, Chancellor Hank Huckabee. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 
today with a project that I think is, in a tangible way, emblematic of what we hope to see in terms of post-secondary education in Georgia for decades to come. And that is that the university system working in concert with the technical college system to focus on the educational and training needs of our citizens. It's a very high priority for us. And I'm pleased to tell you this morning, we have tasked I have tasked two of our top folks to focus so much of their energy on our veterans and currently enlisted men. Dr. Cecil Staten on our staff will oversee the overall military affairs effort, but we have hired someone, a retired uh, Navy veteran, Dr. David Snow, who will be full-time devoted solely to these kinds of veterans. So it's a great day. It's a great symbol, it's a great message, not only to this community, but to all the citizens in Georgia, that we're not only proud of our servicemen, but it's not going to stop there. We're motivated, we're set to move forward with a facility like this, to provide their educational needs so that they will have a better life, and so they will also be able to serve Georgia in a very tangible way as our economy continues to bloom. Thank you for being here. I look forward, hopefully next fall, we'll be here for the opening ribbon cutting. Groundbreaking is the fun, but ribbon cuttings are a lot better. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank you for supporting this project. <laughs> now, it's a real honor for me to introduce the next speaker, someone I've known over the years, but I really got to know in my very brief legislative career. Uh, working so closely with uh, leader uh, Larry O'Neill. He does a great job, not only for his position in the legislature, in the House of Representatives, but I assure you, he was on top of this project from day one. I almost hated to see him coming. Because I knew what he was going to be talking about. Join me in welcoming to the podium, Larry O'Neill. Thank you for those kind words and good morning, everybody. Uh, I want to say thank you to the city of Warner Robins, too. The property we're standing on and all 42 acres of it here is a donation of the city as their part of, of this. And I want to thank the mayor and council that, uh, that did that and also our great partners in Houston County and the entire Houston County government who have already contributed so much to the infrastructure and will in the future here. Thank you for that partnership. I wanted to make sure that you get that said. I want to begin by saying how proud I am to stand before all the great leaders who work together tirelessly to make this Gateway Center possible for our veteran heroes. Our governor, along with many people here today, work on behalf of these heroes, demonstrating what we can accomplish when we put the men and women who so unselfishly serve our nation first. We break ground today for a one-stop facility that sends a message worldwide that Georgia supports the men and women of America's armed forces. As we celebrate the groundbreaking for what I believe is the first facility of its kind in the country, I have the honor of introducing the man who championed this effort from the very beginning, and that's our great Governor Nathan Deal. Governor Deal... <laughs> Governor Deal understands the importance of service. His public service spans four decades as a prosecutor, a judge, state senator, U.S. congressman, governor, and yes, soldier. As a veteran himself, he absolutely understands what it means to serve our nation and the challenges faced face when our veterans leave the military and return to civilian life. He understands the impact of deployment on the spouses and family members of service men and women. As our governor, he has made it a priority that our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines will have the best possible support available to them when they return home to Georgia. This facility with the job training and certification programs will be a huge part of that support. 
Governor Deal knows that veterans make dependable, stable, and productive employees. He knows they possess the additional soft skills acquired in the military that make them reliable. Georgia businesses know that too, and, I, and we are grateful for the private sector partnership in this endeavor we've already enjoyed. Our governor understands that while our veterans' service in uniform may be complete, our nation's obligation to them is not. He completely understands and embraces our motto here that every day in Middle Georgia is Armed Forces Appreciation Day. I'm honored now to introduce a man who under his leadership made Georgia the number one place in America to do business. Everyone, please help me give a warm Middle Georgia welcome to a true American, uh, American patriot, the governor of the great state of Georgia, the Honorable Nathan Deal. Majority Leader, I am honored to be with you today, and the other members of the General Assembly, thank you for being here as well. Distinguished platform guests, uh, distinguished representatives of the Air Force who are here, we are pleased to be with you today. I was at another military installation in our state just a few minutes ago. I was at Fort Gordon in the Augusta area, where I served when I was a captain in the Army. I won't tell you how many years ago that was. We had the assist, one of the assistant secretaries of the Army who addressed a very large group there, and I like most of what she said except for her urging the audience to contact their members of Congress to ask for another round of BRAC. Now, I think living in this community, you all understand the consequences that a round of BRAC could have to this installation here, as well as to our state that is very blessed to have so many military installations. But what we're doing today is one of the very tangible investments, not only of the state, but of the local community, to show our support of the military, and support of a community and a state is an essential element that any BRAC commission looks at in order to determine who gets to stay and who has to go. So, what we do here today has immediate consequences, but I think it also has very long-term consequences. Now, I was going to say this, thank you for getting the microphone fixed by the way. <laughs> Commissioner Jackson, he enumerated some of the areas that the General Assembly and I have over the last two years uh, recognized that we have shortages in people who are qualified for jobs that currently exist in our state. We've identified seven of those areas. I was going to half facetiously, but quite frankly also seriously suggest that one of those other areas that I'm going to recommend to the General Assembly that we add next year is sound technicians. <laughs> Not picking on you. <laughs> the serious part of that statement is this. We are the third largest state in the country in terms of film production. It has a $5.1 billion economic impact on our state. And one of the things that I have found in meeting with them is that they need some folks being trained to be the uh, people that they need for movie production, which it does include sound technicians, lighting technicians, all of the support. And I could very well see that uh, the commissioner might very well at some point in time have a need to include that program uh, here at this new institution. <laughs> and by the way, those seven areas, and hopefully eight, and I may even come up with some more ideas between now and January, folks, so y'all hold on. All of those areas are identified where we have jobs, we just don't have the qualified people to fill them, and the answer was, let's give 100% of the tuition cost to someone who will pursue a degree and a diploma from our technical schools in one of those vital areas. Now, we've done a lot of things to try to be a state that is friendly to our veteran community. We have joined 
the compact relating to children of veterans and service people to make it easier when their families move in, in and out of our state that their children can transition without undue delay in getting credit and getting their records in place. We've also adopted some things that I believe are very important and to indicate our friendliness to our veterans. Things like troops to trucks, pretty catchy idea, but one of those seven areas that we have shortages in is people with CDLs, commercial driver's licenses. And I could not think, nor could our people in our department think of anyone that has better qualifications than military personnel who have been driving that big heavy equipment as a part of their training and a part of their MOS. So that is one of the areas where we are facilitating it. But we've gone further than that. We have looked at our licensing procedure in Georgia with regard to the specialties and the MOS specialties that military people possess. We paid for their training. They have served us in, in honing those skills that they have been given. And we have tried to align our licensing procedure in several critical areas to give credit for their military training and the experience they have received there so that when they transition out of the military into civilian life, they will have a much smoother and shorter time frame in which to get the license that they need to be operational in our state. Those are just a few of the things. Uh, we have a program that we were selected as a state to partner in this. It's called Complete College Georgia. And it requires us, and we have seen the cooperation here of the, uh, the chancellor and the commissioner from both of our institutions of higher learning, focusing on what does it take to get people who enroll in our institutions to be able to stay and to complete their college education. We're making huge strides in that regard, and I compliment both of these gentlemen for their leadership and the leadership of their presidents, two of whom are here on the stage today for trying to make that a reality. You know, it's just like in high school. It's okay to have enrollment, but you need a good graduation rate. And we don't have as good a graduation rate from our higher education institutions as we need. Because we're told by 2020, 60% of the workforce in our state will need some form of degree or certification after high school. And we're working to try to make sure that that happens. We just unveiled a new program a couple of weeks ago, actually, at the Capitol. It's called Go Back, Move Ahead. Now, this is a program that's designed to identify people who had enrolled in our institutions of higher learning, but for whatever reason, they dropped out. Now, we are reaching out to these people because we think they are very likely candidates to add to our qualified workforce. We are encouraging them to go back and by doing so be able to move ahead. Those are the kinds of innovative approaches that I think education has to offer because everything is changing in our country. The delivery of higher education is certainly not exempt from that. And I commend these leaders of our two institutions at the higher levels uh, for their willingness to uh, be a part of that. Now, we are ranked by CNBC as having the best workforce in the country, and we're very proud of that. But we can't retain that distinction unless we continue to have a pipeline of people who are educated, people who are qualified, and those who possess the skills that our employer base is looking for. One of the other things that we have just recently uh, in, put in place is called the Governor's High Demand Career Initiative. This is bringing leaders from business and industry to sit down across the table from the presidents of our technical colleges, our colleges and universities on a regional basis and ask the employer community what kind of skills and what kind of workers are you going to need not just today but five to ten years down the road so that we can tailor our educational delivery system to making sure that when that time comes we will have the workers that these businesses and industries are going to be looking for. 
Now, we also have another program. It's uh, called uh, Operation Workforce. It is an online job resource tool, and we have some 700 employer employers and more than 2,100 veterans who've already signed up through that medium. But today, this groundbreaking of uh, the Georgia Military Academic Training Center, as you've heard, a $10 million investment, is one that I believe will serve us well, not only here in this part of our state, but for our state as a whole. And I believe will distinguish the state of Georgia from many other states around the country in terms of providing the educational linkage between our military veterans and the educational training that they need outside of the military arena. So we're pleased to be a part of that and certainly uh, the institutions here in the immediate area, both the college and the technical college. There we go again. <laughs> we'll be, whoa, will be an important part. I think he's trying to tell me I'm about to finish. <laughs> and I have about finished. I am going to add that eighth degree. <laughs> I want to thank you all for being here. Thank you for supporting of this idea that we had. Thank you for allowing us to make it a reality. And I, too, look forward to the ribbon cutting. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>